This is part 27 in the series that covers this sensational war diary written by a platoon leader named Kurt from the motorized SS Division Reich, which in 1942 would become the 2nd SS Panzer Division, Das Reich. Following Kurt's diary entries and adding rare associated film clips, we'll follow his unit up through the opening phase of Operation Typhoon and see how they played a key role. To put things into context, we'll use original OKW situational maps and bring them to life to get an overview of the front. At the end of the video, I've added some private footage showing the destruction on the battlefield after the Bryansk pocket had been eliminated. So stick around. It's worth it. Der 24. September 1941 Gegen Abend werden wir in diesem Abschnitt ab in the evening we are relieved from duty in this sector and march off towards our vehicles which in the meantime have been brought up to the main road We arrive completely exhausted and are greatly pleased to learn that we're to be positioned in the area around Roslavl where we'll set up a new area for unit reconstitution. During the recent combat, our second platoon had lost its platoon leader and all but one of the rest of its officers. I'm given the order to take command of the second platoon and inform that it should be brought back to fighting condition for the upcoming combat. At 0945 hours, we're all loaded up and traveling in our vehicles in the direction of Gommel. Gegen 10 Uhr wird der Raum von Tchernikov At about 1000 hours, we arrive to the area around Tchernikov. With the complete annihilation of the entrapped Russian army, the battle of encirclement around Kiev has come to an end. We quarter in a comfortable school building. For the next few days, we are finally able to put ourselves back in order and clean and service our weapons and equipment. In a few meetings, we're informed that the final push to victory is about to begin. In an area around Moscow, about 300 kilometers wide and 50 kilometers deep, the Russians have massed around 100 divisions as their last defensive bastion. Before we move on to Das Reich's expected final push for Moscow, I'd like to thank M45's Patreon supporters. Without their support, the production of this series wouldn't have been possible. Patreon supporters get access to film footage that can't be shown here. Please take a look at our different levels of support and consider joining our community. Der 4. Oktober 1941. Um 6.45 Uhr beginnt unser Abmarsch. At 06.45 hours, we depart for our new staging area positioned near Dubrovka, 60 kilometers southeast of Roslavl. In a forced march on October 5th and 6th, we advance about 75 kilometers. The orders that were issued for the SS Division Reich on October 6th stated that they were to advance over Juchnov, penetrating to the north alone with an exposed right flank into the area between Gishatsk and Vyasam. Accomplishing this, they would then have the complicated double responsibility of fending off the enemy's expected attempts at breaking through the ring of encirclement and also, if necessary, to the north of Vyasam to link up with forces from the west and close the encirclement themselves. This vulnerable maneuver had not been the original plan of attack. Originally, the 40th Panzer Corps, which included the 10th and the 2nd Panzer Divisions, were supposed to advance on Kshatsk, 
which is where the encirclement of the Soviet armies was to be completed. On October 5th, however, Hitler issued a Führerbefehl, or direct order, sending the 10th Panzer Division to Vyazhma, where it was to link up with the 7th Panzer Division. The 2nd Panzer Division would support their advance just to the south. The SS Division Reich, taking the pressure off the advancing Panzer Divisions, was to be the key which allowed this entire maneuver to work. On the next day, October 7th, the 10th and 7th Panzer Divisions linked up and so entrapped four Soviet armies, the 16th, 19th, 20th, 24th, and part of the 32nd. Along with the Soviets taken in the Bryansk pocket to the south, there would be a total of about 500,000 POWs, which represented approximately 40% of the entire Soviet fighting force. This certainly would become a decisive victory, however, on this day, October 7th, the first snow fell. Although it melted quickly, it represented the beginning of Rasputitsa, Russia's muddy period. On the 8th, we arrived to Ukra, which is about 145 kilometers from Moscow. Due to impassable terrain and seemingly endless forests, we are forced to unload from our trucks and continue traveling on foot. We've got orders to advance as quickly as possible to the highway that leads to Moscow and make sure that it is passable for our following formations. And now, here's the footage of the battlefield in the Bryansk pocket after it was liquidated. Use the QR code, or this link, to get to our Patreon page and see our different levels of support, to get access to exclusive footage that can't be shown here. Open a free account on our website, military1945.com. If you like this kind of material, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thanks for watching.